Welcome back. So when we look at our code right now, you'll notice that it actually starts having a lot of redundant or, or copied code right here. And I'm, I'm kind of annoyed by that. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm creating a lot of products all over the place. Like here we have products, here we have products and I'm creating them. And um, well, I think I can make that code simpler by adding a small helper class that can help me. Also stuff like I'm using the, the ways that I'm getting my, my query all to get specific elements and stuff like that. I'm going to make it simpler for me in my code to kind of do these and trigger these different things that I'm doing to make the code a lot simpler to read uh, just by adding a small helper class. So let's just start there. I'll jump to the very bottom of my file and I'm going to, to make a new class right here. Class and it's going to be a helper. And that class is just going to, you can name it anything you want. I'm going to change it probably later, but let's just keep the name helper right now. In this class, what I need is some kind of way to get a list of products. So I'll say get products. That's kind of what I want to do. I want to be able to send in how many products I want to create. So I'll just pass in an amount right here on how many products I want to create. And the final thing I want to do is I want to explain to the system that I'm going to end up returning an observable containing a product array, right? So this is kind of what I need to work with these products. So again, if we go to one of these guys, notice right here, this is how I kind of create five products in this case. And then I off them to kind of get an observable of those products. Now we're going to copy this like this, I'm just going to grab it and copy it and put it into my method right here. I'm going to say now the actual products, I might be able to use that outside later on. So I'm going to put that in the top of the helper right here as a property I can get. Then I can kind of get the products that I just created. So I'm going to put that in there. That means that I need to use the, this keyword to get the list of products down here when I push one. And then the final thing I need to do is instead of five, I want to create any amount of products depending on how many I send in from the outside with this method. And the final thing I need to do is just return this right here to kind of get a list of these products. And again, because the products needs to this keyword because it's a property inside this guy. So now that the helper is ready, let's actually try and initialize them in the top right here. So I'll just go to my top of my class. I'll find the before right here where I create the component. What I want to do is I also want access to a helper now that I created myself. So I'll just make a new helper for now. Very simple stuff. It's just a class, right? So I'll make the helper and I'll just make a local reference for that guy up here. Let helper and he's of the type helper. There we go. So now he's created. I have a new helper ready. Let's try and go down and use him. Let's find the first place right here. I'm actually using um, a way to create an array with a single item. We're going to use the helper for that now. So I'll write helper dot get products and I'll put in in this case it was five. That's all I had to do. Now I have five elements. Look at how simple that was compared to what we have. So let's just undo this just to show you guys again. Notice we have a few lines right here. It could probably have been done in one liner, but now with the new code, it looks like this. So very simple stuff. So that's completed now. Let's just continue. Here we have a hundred where we first create the array. Now let's go and just change that. I'll remove all these lines. And instead of all of this, I'll just add in, I wanna create a hundred of these guys and I'm done. Look, so it's, a helper is really good for us because we can really start creating some simple code. Same point right here, we're creating a hundred. So let's just go and get those hundred right there. There we go. And that's all we had to do. And we could keep going right here. And all of the time, whenever you do something, jump and check out your tests. Oh, test isn't running. So something is wrong. Expected five to be one. Okay. Uh, should show one list when we have one item. Okay, so let's try and check out five to be one. And uh, it should show one list. When you have, okay, I put in five there by mistake, I guess. Let's just put in one instead, Let's see what happens. There we go. So notice the test has saved me right there. Okay, thanks test. But that's kind of uh, the idea right here. And you can see how easy it is now to kind of just step through your code and just clean up. Right here we have a single again, a single component. And we're actually using the component here. So let me try and show you how you can do that. So I'll go in here and I'll add a single component. I'll fail now because I don't have the product, but I can actually use my helper and because I kind of opened up, let me show you the helper again. If I go to the bottom, the helper opens up for the list of products right here. So what I can do is actually in this case, I can say I'm going to use the helper dot products at the zero position right here to kind of get the information for that product that I have at the zero position, if that makes sense. So it's, it's that easy to kind of do that. Let's again see if our test runs. Everything runs, no problem. Going back, we'll just continue diving down uh, through this and finding all the other issues. Here we have another one. It seems we need five products right here. Let's put in five products, boof. And again, notice how many lines of code just disappears right here. It's amazing. So that was how simple that was. Now it seems I need each of the products down here. So again, I can use the helper to get that list of products. 
There we go. And now I can get all five products and hopefully the test passes again. Now that was a very, very simple way for me to kind of just clean up my code a little bit, just using this helper. And then the next couple of lessons, we're going to use it some more to kind of remove a lot more of this duplicate code we have, just to again make our tests easier and easier to write. That's it for this lesson. See you next time. Have fun.